Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Mark Borstein. I'm the CTO at Tremo Security and the co-author of Kubernetes and Enterprise Guide, second edition. Uh, and we are going to show off Open Unison's namespace as a service. So this is being able to log in to a self-service portal, request that a namespace get created, uh, and manage who has access to that namespace all without getting administrators involved and without having to run a kube control command. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is log into the Open Unison NAS, and here is a link to the video where we deployed our Open Unison NAS. And I'm integrated with Okta. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in with a user that has no capabilities right now inside of our system. So I'm logged in, and you'll see that I'm just a user. Uh, if I go to the local deployment, I don't have access to anything. I don't even have access to kube control. So uh, we're going to come back here to Kubernetes Enterprise, and we are going to create a new namespace. So uh, this is, might stand in place of um, a Jira ticket, you know, however you're doing that, or like I like to call it the email shuffle. Uh, and then something that's really nice about this setup is it's all API based. So if you don't want to use our portal, let's say you wanted to integrate with like Backstage or something. Could totally do that. Uh, so that said, the first thing we're going to do is choose our cluster. So uh, Open Unison is uh, natively multi-cluster uh, enabled. So we'll show how to do that, and how to manage uh, external clusters in another video. And we're going to choose a name for our namespace. So we're going to do uh, J Jackson demo. That's our namespace. And then we're going to choose a group. Now, these groups are being pulled directly in from Okta. Uh, we support Okta and LDAP for this functionality. We're going to be adding GitHub here in a little bit uh, and Azure AD as well to, to make it a little bit easier. That said, um, if you are using a system that isn't in there, uh, you know, maybe you're using SAML or a different OpenID Connect identity provider that we haven't added this feature yet, you can always type in the group. Uh, but we wanted to make it as easy as possible. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pick which group is our administrator. So we're going to go with um, Okta Domain Admins. And then we're going to pick which group is our uh, users. So these are uh, viewers. So we're going to go with Okta Domain Users. And as you saw, as I typed, it limited the number of groups that were there. Uh, this next one is whether or not we're going to allow internal access groups. So the way that this open unison is deployed, each new namespace can either be managed with external groups, internal groups, or both. Uh, in this case, we're going to manage it with just external groups, which means that in order to get access to this namespace, you have to be a member of one of these two groups. And give a reason. So I'm going to submit that request. Now, as a user, that's it. I'm done. I can't really do anything. Um, but I can go check out the reports. I can see my open requests and see that there's a request open for Matt Mosley. So I'm going to go ahead and log out and log out of Okta as well. So I'm logged in as Jennifer. I'm going to sign out. And let's log in as Matt Mosley. So Matt Mosley is our super user, is our cluster administrator. And Matt's got a open request. So I can see what roles Ms. Jackson has, what the reason is for the new namespace. I'm going to go ahead and approve it. Now, as that's running, a few things are happening. We're creating uh, role bindings. We're creating groups. And we're creating mappings to the external groups. Now, the really nice thing about this approach is that our cluster isn't controlling who has access anymore. That's now being controlled by Okta. So uh, the other nice thing is when it comes to audit time, go to the audit reports, and we can see the change log for period. And there we go all the objects that got created as part of this, um, as part of this uh, uh, demo. Um, now, the very cool part about this is I go to request access, and I go to local deployment, and I see administrators, 
my group, my new namespace doesn't come up because we didn't want to allow access by administrators. So I'm going to go ahead and log out. And I'm going to log out of Okta as well. And now I'm actually going to log in as a different user. This time I'm going to log in as uh, let's see here, people. So I'm going to log in as test Okta. Now this test user, what are they a member of? Groups. So this test user is not a member of the group that we want. So let's go ahead and uh, go to groups. And let's add a new user. So let's add our uh, test user. Save. All right, so now uh, our test user is a member of this group. So let's go ahead and log in with our test user to test.octa. So we're going to log in dash octa. So this is the first time this user is logged in, and we can see that they are a member of the administrator's J. Jackson demo namespace. And if we go to local deployment, they have access to the dashboard and to kube control. Let's go to the dashboard. You see there are a bunch of errors up here because can't list all the stuff in the default namespace. Can't go to black hole. But if we go over to J. Jackson demo and we go to secrets, we're administrators, so we have access to it. Let's go to a different one. Cert Manager, we don't have access to it. So I now have access because of Okta to this namespace. Let's go ahead and sign out for a moment. Let's come back here and let's remove our access. Uh, actions, edit, or nope. Groups, sign people, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and remove our Okta user, or our test user. So let's go ahead and uh, give this a moment for Okta to catch up. So no longer a member of that group. So let's go ahead and log in again. Now I'm still logged into Okta in here. Let's see if that, uh, nope, that's gone. I don't have access anymore. So. Uh, if I go to local deployment, I actually don't have access to anything because I don't have access to any namespaces. So <coughs> I've now been signed out. Um, now, uh, this is great for when you have the ability to manage who has access to those groups. That's not always the case. Uh, it's also not unusual to have to have exception management. And so uh, we had disabled the ability to manage access internally inside of Open Unison for our namespace. Let's go ahead and turn that on. So that's actually turned on via a, um, uh, a label. Uh, so let's go ahead and edit our namespace. Uh, so our namespace here is uh, got request access disabled. So we're going to go ahead and enable it. And now that it's been enabled, we can go ahead and go to request access. Now, before we weren't able to see this uh, because internal access has been disabled. In fact, I'm going to show you there's nothing up my sleeve here. I'm going to go back to disable. So I go and I want to request access as administrator local namespace. Only the namespaces with the label uh, enabled um, are going to show up here. So now I'm going to go back and let's change the label again. So it's enabled. Now I click on administrators and there we go. I can now request to become a administrator. So I'm going to add that to my cart.
And I can't really do much at this point, um, but I know who to go bug, this uh, Jennifer Jackson. So I'm going to go ahead and log out, and let's also log out as Okta. So I'm signed out. And let's sign back in. And this time we're going to be signed in as Jay Jackson. And we're going to see that we have an open request pending. So I've got this open request. Here's the user. I'm going to approve the request. So now here is the fun part. Here's the user's login ID. Uh, I actually don't have access to see all the requests, but I can see approvals completed by me, and now there is an approval of that user having access. Um, if we want, we can even export it to Excel, so it's time to uh, tell the auditors what's going on. You can see it there. It's right there. All right, so let's go ahead and log out. And we're going to log out of Okta as well. And let's log in as our test Okta user. And there we go. I now have that access to the group. And I have access to Kubernetes again. And it's complaining that I can't see anything. So let's like go to secrets in the default namespace. Can't see anything. But I go to J. Jackson demo. Boom. There we go. I'm now able to do things that a uh, namespace administrator can do. Um, so let's go ahead and bring this full circle. Let's remove this user's access. So I am going to log out. I'm going to log back in. as jjackson2. Now, this jjackson2 is not a cluster administrator. She owns this namespace. She's responsible for this namespace, but that's it. She hasn't logged into Kube Control at all. In fact, she doesn't. Does she, she does have access to Kube Control, yes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go request access. We're going to remove our user. So we've got this request for someone else. No longer here. This was the ID that we had gotten before. We're going to do a pre-approval denied, no longer here. So with, when you deny access to the group, they get removed. I'm going to submit that request. And let's go ahead and log out. Sign out. And let's sign in now as our test Okta user. And we can see, don't have access anymore. So I have now been removed from that group. I no longer have access. So we're getting the best of both worlds. We're able to both manage access at the um, identity provider level where we might have some enterprise systems that are able to do that. And we're able to handle exceptions inside of our namespace where we have control. Now, the last part is your system of record. Who allowed this access and why? So we're going to log out one last time. And now we're going to log in as a super user. So let's go over to reports, audit reports, and we can see the single user change log. So let's paste in our user ID, run it, and we can see when the user was created based on just-in-time provisioning, updates for just-in-time provisioning. We can see that it was removed because we removed it from Okta. Then it was added as part of a onboarding uh, workflow and then it was removed because of an onboarding workflow. 
And then, you know, this is a little gnarly trying to find that user ID, right? So we want to go to uh, Open Unison and Management, Operators Console, and let's say, uh, I think it's User. There we go, Test User. You can see what groups they have uh, and figure out their login ID and then run our reports off that. So we've run that full circle of being able to onboard a new namespace, um, approve access to that namespace, approve onboard users from an external source, enable uh, self-service requests, and onboard users into that as well. Uh, so we're going to have the uh, documentation for this in the um, in the in the notes on the video. Thanks, and uh, have a great day.